Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we're going to take a closer look at properties, but this time we're going to use the, the Spring Framework's environment interface. So the environment will contain a lot of information about the envir environment the application is running in, and we want to tell it about some properties and then use that environment interface within our configuration being to get the property. So similar technique, this uh, environment interface is also introduced into uh, Spring 3.1, been used for quite a bit. It is a, a preferred way of setting environment properties. And I'm going to show you how we can use this in a similar test to what we did in the last module. We'll set up a configuration bean and then a J unit test and I'll show you how we can get properties on that bean. So let's jump over to IntelliJ now and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, this configuration class looks a lot like what we just used. But now, instead of adding in the using the value annotation, I'm injecting in the Spring Environment Interface. So this is something that's going to be from the Spring context, and we're asking it on line 17 and 18 there for this Environment Interface to get injected into our class. So Spring's going to create an object of that that implements the Environment Interface for us and inject that in, and that object is going to have properties that we can access. Now we're telling the Spring context there on line 14 again to use the property source, class path, and the, the property file testing.properties. Now, we don't have to do the property placeholder bean on this one because we are bringing it in through the Spring environment. And you can see there on line 23 how we're, we're accessing the property. So we do a, an EMV, get property, and then the property name. And this is going to reference properties out of our properties file. Now on the next line, line 24, you can see I'm getting it using get required property. And this allows me to tell Spring the uh, type that I want. So Spring's going to go in there because this property, the port number is an integer. Spring will go in and convert the string from the properties files to an integer for us. So let's go ahead and run this right now. And I'll show you how this runs. I, I set up a test for it. I'll toggle over to that. And I don't need that. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, we can see on line 24 there, I'm getting a, a red squiggly line in there. IntelliJ thinks that it can't wire it. I haven't set up the spring context properly for IntelliJ, but it actually can. So you can see now on line 20, I have that other properties or other spring configuration file in. So it's going to bring in a different spring configuration for this test, the, the one that uses the environment. So let's go ahead and run this. And we, we can see that it, it completes successfully, so our properties are getting set properly from the environment. Now, there is one other thing I want to show you while we're here on this. Now, if I come over here and let's uh, use the username. I'm going to copy that value to get the property name right. Now, in IntelliJ, what I can do is come up here and say Edit Configurations. And it's this guy that I want to do, the, the test that we just ran. Now, I want to change the environment variable. Set that. And let's call this Fred now. Fred with a bang at the end. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to run the test again. Now we can see the test fails. And we got wired into our property, the value of Fred Bang, rather than Ron. And what's happening is, this is how properties get loaded in Spring. They have a precedence. So I set that value in the environment as Fred Bang versus Ron. And the environment variable takes precedence over the file variable from the, the properties file. So there is a hierarchy in Spring where that can get sourced in. And if you're working in a Linux environment, you might set this as, if you're using Bash, to export a property that way. Or if you're running it from command line, you can p pass it in minus D property name, and that will get picked up. So later in the course, I'm going to go over this a lot more in detail. But I want you to get in your head that the properties can come from different places and there is a hierarchy in Spring. So I just overrode this 
So this is a, a way that I can have a password set in a properties file. And then when it goes to a different environment, I can override that properties file with a command line or an environment variable. This is very important when we start deploying this to other, other spots in the enterprise. Okay, so in this module, I showed you a couple different things here. The first was using the Spring Environment Interface. So this is an interface that we can ask to be injected into our classes, and then we can get properties off of that. And I also showed you how to override a property using an environment variable. So there's a couple of different ways we can override properties in Spring, in Spring, and I just showed you on how that hierarchy kicks in. And you can try this on the previous test and with the properties placeholders configure, and it will also take effect there too. This is universal across Spring, so you, you can use a combination of these techniques in setting the properties. And as we get into more complex deployment scenarios, we will be utilizing things like this.